the American right suffers from a chronic failure of knowing what time it is, and nothing revealed that fact more clearly than the recent death of Russian dissident Alexei Navalny. Navalny, the 47-year-old outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin, died suddenly while serving a long prison sentence on charges of extremism. The natural instinct in such a situation is to denounce the political oppression of Putin's regime. But the United States has lost its moral standing to criticize other nations due to the criminalization of political dissent that is occurring within our own system. Still, many conservative politicians and pundits like Ben Shapiro took to Twitter and assured Republicans that while the Biden administration was indeed involved in weaponizing the justice system, comparisons to Putin's Russia were unwarranted. This is, quite frankly, insane. If the right doesn't wake up to what is happening in the United States, conservatives will find themselves the victims of a regime that has every intention of imprisoning its enemies. Just to be clear, I'm very sure that Vladimir Putin is a very bad man who doesn't care about the interests of my family or my country. Whether he wants to conquer the world and establish a Russian fascist global empire, as many neocons and leftists claim, is another question. But I'm very sure that Putin is no friend of mine. There is, however, an unbearable absurdity to Western leaders like Justin Trudeau or Joe Biden, who have repeatedly imprisoned and suppressed their own opponents, giving lectures on the importance of democratic norms. The failure to understand that our own domestic political oppression is far more important than condemning the actions of some distant foreign leader demonstrates a lack of ability to make a critical perspective shift inside the conservative movement. Americans have grown accustomed to being the global hegemon, and it shows. Our leaders assume the right to dictate the actions of foreign rulers, and our political commentary enjoys pontificating about the superiority of our own system. We definitely like the idea of being the leader of the free world, but that only works if you manage to maintain liberty at home, and we have not. Twitter poster Douglas Mackey has been sentenced to prison for making memes. More than 1,300 Americans have been charged for protesting the presidential election on January 6, 2021, and many of them have had their due process rights tossed into the garbage. Donald Trump, a former president and Joe Biden's chief political opponent, has been arrested on multiple fallacious charges, and several states have attempted to strip him from the ballot. Many of Trump's attorneys and administration officials have had their lives ruined due to politically motivated legal prosecutions. The list of attacks on our political freedoms is almost endless and is only growing larger. The institutions that were originally designed to protect Americans from enemies both foreign and domestic now devote themselves to punishing opponents of the regime. The FBI monitors Catholics at traditional Latin masses, the Justice Department pursues absurd charges against pro-life protesters, and the Department of Homeland Security treats Trump supporters like domestic terrorists. Thanks to the Twitter files and recent reporting from Mike Binns of the Foundation for Freedom Online, we know that our domestic security apparatus and intelligence services collude with social media companies to control the American electoral process using the same tactics they use to foment color revolutions in foreign countries. The idea that the right should spend its time criticizing the democratic process of any other country at this point is absurd. Hey guys, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, New Founding Talent. Look, we all know that the job market is a disaster right now. Based people can't find good companies to work for, and good companies can't find anybody to get the job done. The competency crisis is very, very real. So how do we get these two incredibly important groups together? We need organizations like New Founding. New Founding has created a network of high-excellence professionals who are seeking to join grounded American businesses. These are individuals, often in elite organizations, who are ready for a team and a mission that supports their values instead of working against them. Aligned companies are already using this network to hire high-trust, exceptional individuals who can match the culture and mission of their teams. So if you're looking for better employees to build a better world, you need to go ahead and apply for access to the New Founding Talent Network at newfounding.com backslash talent. You'll get connected with candidates who will build your business. That's newfounding.com backslash talent. Check it out today. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. The United States doesn't exist in a geopolitical vacuum. 
Countries like China, Russia, and Iran don't stop seeking advantage just because Americans are having problems domestically. But conservatives must understand that while these countries do present some level of opposition to our national interests, none of them are the primary threat to the freedom of the American people. It's a terrifying thing to admit, but the most dangerous threat to the liberty of American citizens is a ruling class that would strip them of their most foundational constitutional rights in the name of defending our democracy. Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping may pose a threat to the international interests of the United States, but who cares if those interests are dictated by a ruling class that hates the average American? Vladimir Putin didn't shoot the unarmed veteran Ashley Babbitt. Putin hasn't facilitated an invasion at America's southern border. Putin hasn't pushed transgender propaganda onto this nation's schoolchildren. Putin hasn't allowed rampant violent crime in American cities. Putin hasn't stolen the money of American taxpayers through borrowing and inflation to fund foreign wars. Again, I'm very sure that Putin is a bad man who wishes this country ill, but he is not the one irreparably damaging our homeland. The oldest trick in the political playbook is attempting to distract the population with a foreign threat to obfuscate the malicious actions of the ruling class at home. This doesn't mean that the United States doesn't have very real opponents abroad, but our primary focus must remain on the ongoing weaponization of our justice system and the Biden administration's attempt to criminalize domestic political opposition. Christ instructed us to remove the log from our own eye before we attempt to clear the speck of dust from our brother's eye. Before criticizing another country for its lack of political freedoms, we must make sure to secure our own. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the Orrin McIntyre show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do, please leave a rating or a review. It really helps with the algorithm magic. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, Substack, Gab, YouTube, Odyssey, or Instagram, the links to do all of that are down below in the description. Of course, you can also watch all of my episodes and read all of my columns over at The Blaze. And guys, also don't forget that my upcoming book, The Total State, is available for pre-order pretty much everywhere. Amazon Books, A Million, Barnes & Nobles, any place like that. Go ahead and make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.